The most essential thing in life is to establish heartfelt communication with others. Hmm. There's bugger all else to do. <laughs> I've carried that Tom York quote around in my head for a couple of months now, and every time that I come back to it, I get this stupid smile on my face. Give me a second and I'll explain to you why. You see, for most of my life, I've spent my time chasing after acceptance. And I'm sure most of you have too. I've always wanted to feel like I belonged, like I had a voice that deserved to be heard and understood. But time and time again, I felt like I couldn't be my authentic self with the people around me. I always felt like I was weird for being passionate about so many things that interested me, even though I wasn't any good at any of them. I couldn't explain to people and they couldn't understand why I was so interested in spending my time learning and talking about these things. You see, I'm a very sentimental and empathetic man, which means that I care about things and people very deeply. Like when I listen to music, for example, I don't just passively listen to a song. I get deeply immersed in the lyrics, in the instruments, in the sounds, in the voice. I get moved and brought to tears every time that I listen to How to Disappear Completely by Radiohead. It's just the way that I am. And I love that about myself. I truly, fully experience the things that I love. The problem with being this way, however, is that I'm also a people pleaser. Which means that when people would tell me that they didn't care about what I was talking about, or they didn't find these things interesting, I would take it very personally, and I would tell myself to stop being annoying, and that I should stop bothering everyone with my interests. Which sucks, right? No one should have to feel like their interests are annoying or bothering other people, especially when these people are those that you consider your friends. Nowhere is this more apparent to me than in my career. And for those of you that don't know, I'm a software engineer at Amazon, and I'm often reminded by social media or other people on YouTube that this is the dream job of so many people who want to be software engineers. But it was never my dream job. My parents actually wanted me to study computer science because they knew that it paid well and they knew that my uncles and cousins had studied that in university and they were being paid very well for it. My dream job was actually to study physics and to become a professor because I fell in love with Richard Feynman. For those of you who don't know who Richard Feynman is, he was this amazing theoretical physicist who was also an, an exceptional storyteller and teacher. After watching some of his old lectures and reading his stories, I was convinced that I wanted to be a physicist and that I wanted to be a professor. I wanted to be a storyteller that could make people fall in love with the subject that they were studying. That was it for me. But I gave that up and I resigned myself to studying computer science and getting a high paying job. And I did. But if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't really like my job. Because it's a constant reminder that I have lived my life motivated not by what brings me joy or fulfillment, but by fear. A deep fear of not living up to the ideas that other people had of how I should live my life. And an even deeper fear of finally having the choice to do what I want to do. In the last year, I have felt lost and hopeless, like I was never going to truly find a place that I belonged and feel like I was doing work that truly fulfilled me. That was until I stumbled upon three YouTube content creators, Lana Blakely, Elizabeth Phillips, and Ali Abdal. Lana made me feel like I belonged with her videos on being an introvert, on life's purpose, and our relationships with other people and ourselves. I felt like I'd finally found someone who thought about life as deeply as I did. Elizabeth has a passion for so many different things, and she is also a self-proclaimed people pleaser just like me. So when I watched her content, I felt like there really was someone out there whose head was in so many different interesting places at once. That it was completely possible to be passionate and interested in so many different things, and to just want to explore ideas. And then there was Ali, who was just a fearless content creator. He wasn't scared of letting people know that he was a beginner, and he still felt confident enough to share his learnings with other people online. And that was something that I felt like I lacked in my life and in myself. It was because of these three content creators that I felt for the first time like I had found somewhere where I belonged and where I could be understood. That it was possible for me to do the same thing as them, start a YouTube channel, talk about the things that interested me, and build a community of like-minded individuals online. 
So in order to better understand how to do that, I signed up for Ollie's course, the fourth cohort of the Part-Time YouTuber Academy, so that I could learn how to creatively express myself on YouTube. So that's why I'm here, staring at this camera, making these YouTube videos, and it's the same reason why I smile every time that I think about that Tom York quote. Because I finally feel like I'm doing something for myself, something that's bringing me closer to feeling that heartfelt connection with others. So how do you live a miserable life? by letting the thoughts and opinions of others dictate what you do with your life and keep you from doing the things that truly bring you joy and fulfillment. The most essential thing in life is to establish heartfelt communication with others. Hmm, there's bugger all else to do. <laughs>